week's tutorial and in this tutorial I would be giving you an overview on data storages. So when I was new to the business analysis side or the product analysis side and when I researched various products and how products need to integrate with each other, I came across certain data storages and in today's world the most common data storages that we come across are data lakes, data warehouses and data marts. So initially I was really confused into what was the main difference between these three data storages and what were also the similarities between these three data storages. So after it took me, it did take me you know some time to actually uh, wrap my head around these three data storages and understand what was the real nuances they had and the different quirks and the you know uniqueness what they had. So in this tutorial I would be giving you a little bit of an overview on what these three storages are. So let's go into detail. So how are they similar? So if you see primarily they are used for data storage, nothing more than that. And if you see how do they differ is based on the data types they actually, you know, they store and then what are the what users use this for and then the users who actually use this data and the sources from which data comes from. So based on these aspects is actually what differentiates these three data storages. So let us look a little more in detail about these three. So if you see in the first case, the data lake, just imagine a lake where water comes in from multiple sources. It can be from rivers, it can be from ponds, etc. So that's how your data lake also works. Data comes in from multiple data sources and the data coming in also from these data sources can be of different data types. So you won't be getting a particular set of data coming in. Data can be like from sensors, it can be like documents coming in, it can be textual, it can be numerical, it can be data sets, it can, and when I say textual, it can be like, you know, feedbacks, opinions, data from websites, anything it can be. So that's how your data pours into your data lakes. So I can say that the data lake has, you know, different types of data, structured, unstructured, raw, processed, unprocessed data, it can be anything. So that's the gist of the data lake. Coming on to your data warehouse, unlike the data lakes, your data warehouse accepts data or, you know, on, unless when integrated with certain data sources, the data will be able to flow into your data warehouse. So it does not get data from each and every source. So that's how your warehouse actually functions. And when this data is got, the data that is stored and, you know, um, archived in this data warehouse is actually structured data. It's never unstructured data. Keep in mind, it's always structured data. And the data warehouse consists structured data of variety of data and data belonging to different domains. So, so let's say like for an organization, they will have different departments like the sales, marketing, finance, HR, they have the operations, they have the legal team. So they, have, they deal with so much of data. So all this structured data generally is stored in your data warehouses. The next one is your data maths. Now, there are certain instances where you might need all the data from your data warehouse. But when you look at certain scenarios that certain people, like for example, the HR department, they might only require HR data and not sales, marketing, etc. So at that time, taking in a subset of this data warehouse information and giving it to a particular department is and storing it in a storage is something that is called as your data mart. So if you see, data would be taken and given to the sales team then sales data as i said would be given to the sales team marketing data to the marketing team and that's how you form your different data maths so this is a little bit of gist from about these three data storages so let's look at it at one glance how do they actually differ so as i said for the data lake the data sources actually from a variety of sources you get data coming in whereas for a data warehouse it's from specific sources and when you look at data maths it's from either specific sources or it can be from a data warehouse since it's the subset of a data warehouse the next one is how is the data that comes in as i said for the data lake it's unstructured structured or it can be unprocessed data and when I say unstructured data, as I said, it can be freestyle, textual, it can be digital analog, anything it can be. The next one is your data warehouse. 
So how is the data here? As I said, it's very well structured and it contains data for all domains. The next one is the data mart. Here your data is also structured, but it contains data for specific domains. So the example that I gave was giving the sales team only sales data. The next one is who uses this data? So the data lake, the data that is in the data lake, mostly if you, use, if you look at it, data scientists use this data because they need to discover and uncover a lot of insights from this data. So that's how they deal with so much of data. They process the data and they bring up different insights, predictions, etc. When you look at a data warehouse, mostly who uses this is data analysts and data engineers. Data analysts use this to, you know, analyze data, bring different solutions to problems. And if you see data engineers, they are mostly interested in, you know, engineering the data, finding out how data comes into this application, etc. So they generally work with the data warehouses. And if you look at data maths, you have data analysts who actually analyze a particular subset of data. And what you users use this for is when you see data lakes, they use this for, as I said, predictions, insights, for modeling data to come up with different nuances and new, you know, insights. The next one is the data warehouse. Here users use this for reporting, business intelligence and visualization. Visualization can be in the form of graphs, charts, storyboards, dashboards, etc. And the same thing goes for the data maths where people use it for reporting, business intelligence and visualization. So these are the, you know, broad differences between the three data storages. And I hope that you have a little bit of a clarity on what are the three differences here. And I hope it was useful. So do share your feedback. Thank you.